Okay. So we'll start with the next talk. The next talk will be about Cody, what's new, features and improvements by Martin Kaiser. There you go. Okay, thank you. Uh, my, my name is Martin. I've been a member for from the Cody team. Uh, I'm a member of the Cody team since 2011. Uh, I started out basically helping out on the forum, wrote some Python scripts, and I'm now with one. It's basically it's free for all, and we just do something that ends up being a product. So I'm going to talk about version 18. So unlike VLC, we release on all platforms at the same time for since we started. <laughs> So, uh, the past release, version 17, called Krypton, it was quite a solid release. Uh, we did put out a lot of bug fix releases, but there were tiny fixes, nothing major like all the past releases where we had big issues. And for us, 17 is end of life from the moment we release it. So that's since November. So, version 18, this is our new splash screen. We have awesome artists. So it's called Leia. So our current work in progress, and we started around November 2016. So we, the work starts quite early. Some already started in May 2016. Our goals, they're kind of made up goals because that's how we just work. We focus more on architecture, improve implementation, what we already have. And actually, in 2011, we started, talked about the long wanted cleanup release, which this just turns out to be, because we are just keep cleaning stuff and we're in no rush at all. So the coding goals, improve the existing code quality, upgrade the current code we have actually to C++11, which we now have as default, remove the duplicate code, remove all the obsolete libraries. We use FFmpeg as much as we can, because why maintain something when there's something better? dropping unmaintained code and upstreaming the patches we had because that was a big issue as well. When you upgrade the library you use and you have a shitload of patches, you still need to fix all that again. So upstream all you can. So also binary add-ons. So we are moving a lot from core, moving to add-ons because in the end the goal is to distribute them through our repository and you just run version 18 and you get a new sample library, new uh, visualizations and all that, picture decoding, when the raw library updates for the new picture formats, you actually just don't have to install a new version of Kodi, you just get the update. Less code is better, it seems. As you see here, and since 2016, the code flattens out, but we gain a lot of new features and even platforms by just dropping dead code and we still gain new features. So current state, 1800 pull requests, which most are massive pull requests. 5700 comments, about 32 different contributors. This just stats from GitHub. Uh, 7500 change files, a lot of additions. And in the end, the user base, we basically have no idea. We can use some download stats, but some people re-download it again, and then we don't really track anyone. So when are we ready? We don't know. The initial idea was December, but then, so, but then something happened. <laughs> so we started cleaning up, and then we got contact, contacted by some big company who I'll talk about later. Plan changes, well, like VLC, we don't really promise. We'll just say when it's ready, and then we never lie. This will what happened. So as most of you know, Cody started out on the Xbox. Then that hardware kind of faded away in, since 2009. We never did anything more about it. And we never expected to happen this this happen again because Xbox closed system, but then Microsoft turned around. So we got an email from the Microsoft 
saying, you want to be on the Windows Store? It's like, no, that's not going to happen. It's too difficult. Now, here's a, here's a working version for you. <laughs> so that was the Centennial Bridge platform. So basically, they wrap around the Win32 application into a wrapper that you put on the store. It's like, oh, that's kind of easy. We just had to clean up a bit. A couple of months later, you want to be a UWP platform? Sure, but that's a lot of effort. Well, we do that for you. <laughs> so in the end, we work together. And that's what happened. We started out, moved to the 64-bit windows. June 2016, the word started for the Centennial Bridge. Took a month about to get it ready. December 2016, the initial work started for UWP. July, we had first running it. Basically, it started, and that was about it. And in December, we launched to the store as a working version. Not everything works yet, because UWP has limitations we still need to fix. And Microsoft has to fix, because 4K playback of 10-bit files crashes the Xbox. <laughs> Please fix that, Microsoft. Video player. So an important part of Kodi is also the video player, which also dated back to the Xbox. So we still have all that code in our repository, and we need to clean that up. So we started out cleaning this up. Legacy code grew over time. No real architecture, not platform agnostic. So if we want to do all the 4K, 8K, 10-bit HDR stuff, we needed to start cleaning this up. So this actually started in 15 already. 17 improved a lot, but... So the benefits, maintainable code. Can't stress about maintainable code, because anything you cannot maintain, no one wants to touch. And we still have a lot of code no one wants to touch, because it's, it's impossible to maintain. And if you change one thing, we have one part of Kodi. If you change something there, the video playback breaks, although it has nothing to do with video playback. So we need some brave soul to rip his heart out and start doing this. No. <laughs> so, large part of the cleanup is done. Uh, we now can speed up, slow, uh, slow down playback speed, future proof towards higher bit rates. Shaders and renderers, so we now can upscale quite efficiently without the, like no mem copy at all. Uh, play in DRM protected streams using input stream framework. So, Netflix actually now works in Kodi, if you can find it. So there's a plugin out there, you can just install it, and you have your Netflix library, Amazon Prime, Sky, using the DRM framework. So if the hardware supports DRM with, uh, with Widevine, it just works. Um, future, transcoding, like Plex is our competitor regarding this, but we want to do that as well. But more like a, slay, uh, a mesh network. Uh, one master and several slaves, but slave-master combination. Sp splitting up playback and user interface so we can run headless, which we also need for the transcoding again. And picture-in-picture picture and all that. Well, I can show you a screenshot of something playing, but what's the point of that? doing that? Input handling is something also we did. So the rework of all the controllers, keyboards, because what you want to do is plug in any controller, and it should just work on any platform. Next up, Retro Player. This, these two go hand in hand. Retro Player was first, but then for Retro Player, playing old classic games, you want any controller to work. So that, that's why we need input handling. So chicken egg, in the end, input handling was first. So why? Playing old games, so much fun. We did an entire DEF CON day for, with our team just playing games. <laughs> Very productive day. So, yeah, so an entire Sunday just having pizza and playing games. Um, controller setup, as I said, easy, need to be easy. Auto handling of the emulators, never leave Kodi to play games, and a single library, which is still future work. You want to have a, a library of games just like you have for movies. 
and don't care about what emulator it uses, you just want to play the game. And again, upstream of the code, because all the emulators are not so nice. They do stuff really weird. They actually make a build system to make a build system to make a build system to compile the code. It's like they compile Python to run another compiler to build the code. It's like really weird stuff. So we try to fa also fix that to make our lives e easier again. So here's a, just a default game which is included, Bomberman. So you can just start playing, pausing, rewinding and play from that moment again. So it's like instant cheat code. So if you like play Super Mario, you die, you just rewind and start again from that point and you continue playing. <laughs> uh, shaders. So we can also use different shaders on the games to have your own look, like uh, some are working on having the arca arcade look, like the whole CRT look and feel, or just the best graphics possible. So hard to get rid of it. <laughs> yeah, and some people actually want it back. So here's the controller configuration. So basically, you plug in any controller you have. These are all add-ons, so you can install the add-on you want for that controller, which other configures for any other emulator. So I can plug in an NES controller, and it works for Atari games. It works for Sega games, without any stuff you need to do. Yeah, so there's an entire abstraction layer in between which auto-translates all the stuff so you don't need to care about all this. So here you have, you just install a profile for a controller and it auto-translates for any emulator. What else we're going to do? I'm done. Android platform uses the standard API. This is something we fought hard for because the Android platform was shit. Everything used their own stuff and basically cut everything out. You use Android as a standard or you don't use it at all. Yes, but this device doesn't work. We don't care. So this actually forced AM Logic, other companies to adhere. That's Windows now also 64 bit. Wait on support added again. Thanks, Philip. So we had a GSOC uh, several years ago adding Wayland, which kind of died down, no one maintained it, Wayland wasn't ready enough, so Philip did it again this year. And while he did that, he improved several other features, like touch, because he had some time left. Direct man rendering manager, which Lucas did. They both are doing talks in other places this afternoon, so if you want to more, know more about this, please join them. We use CMake for our build system. So we don't care what system you run on, you run CMake. It's one build system to rule them all for us. Dash support, so that was something was long asked for. You want to play YouTube videos and all that. So we ha now have an, an add-on you plug in. So that's this whole input stream framework. We don't change core, we just change the add-on and you install it or you auto update it when something changes. So don't need to install a new program or a new Kodi version, you just get the update in the end. DRM using Widevine, so you now I can play 4K Netflix in Kodi on my NVIDIA Shield on Android because Android supports Widevine and that w just works. PVR improvements. So everyone's talking about cutting cable well, no one really does that yet. There's no easy solution to do this yet. And we spend a lot of time improving this. Get a network tuner, plug it in your cable. Most of the time you get just free channels from the air. And you can now have all the guides, recording all that, auto dumping it to your library again, rewatching it. Music library is also something we improved a lot on. Because some, we found some way actually caring about that and he spent a lot of time fixing all the tag scanning which was such a mess. Library support, thanks VLC because we use VLC as a main library for Blu-ray stuff so we can actually do the Java uh, menus which are on Blu-rays. Video library can also scan embedded text from 
ancient times, we always had to have NFO files, XML files next to it, or scanning the file name to match it online to get all the metadata. MP3 tagging was for music, which existed a long time, but now it also exists for video. It's still a mess, but finally we can use it. It's disabled by default because all there's no standardization of tagging, so we now need to implement a new standard, which everyone hopefully will follow in the end. A massive amount more, but too much to mention. As you saw, we have 1,800 pull requests with massive changes, and most of them, you just start coding, and you don't even know this anymore, because it works, and that's our main goal. If you go from 17 to 18, it should still work. You shouldn't even know this, except for Oh, this suddenly works better after a couple of weeks of using. So that's our main goal. It should just work. More the aspiration. Hmm? And that's what our cleanup release is about. It sh should just work. Yes, we already started on 19. Because why? Well, there's one big reason. And this is Python. Python will die out in 2020, and Python 2, Python 2 sorry. All add-ons in Kodi, except for some binary add-ons, are written in Python. So we had a GSOC project again, and someone upgraded to Python 3. Our initial thought was, let's combine 2 and 3 in one release, but that's near impossible, and by the time we actually will release it, it's 2020, probably, and so you have to drop it anyway. So it's, it's more mature and better uh, documentation. Uh, three is actually supported. There's better uh, string handling. It's so much better because in two is a nightmare. You have to decode, encode, UTF, all that. It's, it's a mess. So we're planning on dumping it in version 19, which will probably ne be next year. And we're already doing a build now, so you can actually test your add-ons to make it Python 2 and 3 compatible, so they just keep working again. And from version 19, we will only accept Python 3 add-ons. And the rest will just stop working. We will make sure they are auto-disabled, just don't work anymore, except unless something happens where, you, where the developer didn't follow the rules exactly. But we'll try to auto-detect if it's Python 3 and just don't run it, except else you get a script errors. And it's actually quite a small thing done. It's only 57 changes, files, and 700 lines changed to upgrade to Python. But the main part was finding all those hooks in the code because it's so entangled everywhere. And he actually did a great job on cleaning that up again. It's not just Kodi we have. We need to maintain a much more forum, wiki, mirror system. We have like 24, 25 terabytes a day of usage, just Kodi downloads, add-on updates, uh, 3,000 requests per second on the connection of single mirror. Yeah, but it's an average of past year. iOS and Android remote controls are also part of the project. The needed libraries we also have and maintain and upgrade, code upstreaming, company contacts like uh, actually Google, NVIDIA, uh, Microsoft, they also need to be maintained. So it's not only the code you have to maintain, but also all around it. And your own personal life, apparently, because we all have that some, at some points. No. Because <laughs> we all do this for fun, but you have to remember you also have a family of, uh, around this and you need to spend time with them as well. And your job and all that. So, thank you. So, are there any questions? Actually, it's the XBMC Foundation. Okay. 
So we could keep the we kept the name as a foundation because it's too much paperwork and we're basically lazy. <laughs> so that's why we kept the name XBMC as a foundation and we're legally uh, allowed to do that, but we call the program Cody. Huh? Cody actually stands for nothing, except for the, uh, if you look at a remote, you have the play, the pause, the next button, and that was kind of how Cody came to be. It's, it's the player controls in a certain order, if you look at it, and that's how Cody existed. Can you use that and I pass the yep. microphone? Any other, uh, so any other question? Uh, Yeah. Hi. Uh, thanks a lot for coding. It's great. Um, as a as a user, how can we help? What's a good way? What What do you need from users to help you? Finding bugs, proper bug reports, is something we really need. Instead of it doesn't work, we actually want to know what doesn't work. The steps we like proper bug reporting is something really helps. Like and always use the latest version because we don't need a bug report about a version that's half a year old. Could you uh, get uh, Cody released in the F-Droid App Store, please? Same answer as VLC. It's their problem. They ask us, and it's like, here's the code. Find it out yourself. And they probably won't do it because it's too big. Are there any plans to have a shared library, as example, uh, Amazon Video, Netflix, and the local videos together in one library? Yes, there are plans. Uh, we started out using UPMP for that, uh, for having a mesh network between uh, all your Kodi installs, because even sharing your own library within your home, like all the devices you have, would be nice to have one library. Someone started that, but he got a life. <laughs> The code is still there, it needs to be updated, and, but definitely integrating Amazon and Netflix into the, the library is one of the goals we really want, but we need to have a framework for that. Over here. <coughs> Two questions. One is, uh, when will advanced settings be uh, editable via the GUI? Never. Okay. <laughs> Why? Why is that? Um, they're called advanced settings for nothing, so we will review the advanced settings, and if we feel it needed to be the GUI, we do that. And else we drop them. Okay. So they will be phased out except for development purpose. But like most want to, uh, MySQL, yeah, MySQL yeah. added to the GUI, we feel that's not the way to go. Okay. We want the automated mesh library auto communication. And the second question was a non jailbreak version for iOS. Uh, can you repeat? Uh, a non jailbreak version for iOS. Um, you can compile it yourself, and if you have a developer license, you can install it. <laughs> and it the problem is that um, parts of the code... Um, yeah. Thanks. The uh, problem is that parts of the code uh, are not allowed in the App Store. And it's basically Python so add-on support. Python so add-on support is not allowed in the App Store because so it allows you to install something else. So uh, there is a version of Kodi. Um, Mr. Um, MC is called that. They M actually M removed the repository stuff, so you cannot install add-ons, and yeah. that's allowed. So if you make a Kodi version without a repository, that's yeah. fine. If you have a, if you have a de developer account, you can uh, build it yourself and sign it yourself, uh, and then um, have it your, have it fully. There's also an Apple but TV 4 we can't version. Put it in the App Store. You can just compi uh, compile it if you want. But we just cannot be in the App Store, or we have to remove add-on support as an update version. So that's something we don't feel comfortable doing. With the refactor of the dear and Maduli, um, could we could we, could, it, could I play Netflix on the Raspberry Pi? Yes. Platform? Yes. Yes. Okay. It's limited. Uh, what we limit Netflix to is whatever the device support. So basically, we use, we emulate as being a web browser. Mm -hmm. So a web browsers are limited to 720p. So like on Android, we actually use Widevine on the on the device itself, which encrypts has the entire chain. So basically, we tell Android, play this. We don't care what it is. We still have all the, the video controls. But we don't see what's happening. We don't see the image. So we cannot screen grab. That's 
on Raspberry Pi 720p because it basically it's the same as a browser. And software decoding on the Pi. So we still don't have the full support on Windows or UWP because we're still looking into that and we might get some help from certain corners doing that. But for now, Android is the only one I think that actually does hardware and the rest is software. Thank you, Matein.